The second quality that we should look for, and we don't have time to go through all these, you can write them down and you should build and elaborate on these things after truthfulness. The second one is what? Intelligence. He said, The line of the poet says, and this is a poem if you're from Morocco, West Africa, or Egypt. This was basically taught for at least seven, eight hundred years in those communities. It was memorized by people. And he says that intelligence, fatana. Imam Ibn, uh, Ibn Qayyim said that intelligence means two things. As Sheikh Yasser pointed out, knowledge of the religion. And that's why I believe like if you're going to be an MSA president or you're going to take on the leadership of a community, you should also spend some time and institutions, if they were smart, would sponsor you to take like a course at Qalam or to take a course with Maghrib, to take some kind of course that will give you, hey, these are the fundamental principles that are non-negotiables. And these are the things which are negotiable. In DC, th this summer, we plan to do a, 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 an intensive called What Bends? What can bend and what can't bend? The presumption of postmodernity is that bending itself is bending. <laughs> this is the problem of postmodernity, that the presumption is that bending itself is bending. There's absolute chaos in the world and you can destruct, deconstruct everything and you can invoke every ism until the only ism you have left is nihilism. And this is an outcome, but if you're not educated and I'm not educated and we're not engrossed in some kind of formalized study where we understand what is negotiable, what is non-negotiable? Because that's part of being sincere to Allah and sincere to His Messenger and honest is to have some basic knowledge. So I would encourage you before you take on a position that and your institution should be so serious that they're able to fund that. They're funding that educational process to learn the basics, to learn the fundamentals. The second thing Imam Ibn Qayyim said that equals intelligence is knowledge of the people, wisdom. To understand where we are and I'll give you a story. When I became Muslim with my friend, we used to DJ together in high school. So imagine your best friend became Muslim. Imagine when you saw that. Like you used to smoke blunts and now you're making dicker. You know, you went from the liquor store to the dicker store. You know, it was amazing, right? And it's like my homie, this is my boy. He married a Moroccan woman, hence he's overweight, but he's happy. Brother killing the couscous. Um, so we became Muslim and next to our mosque was a convenience store. And this brother in this convenience store, speaking of postmodernity, you can find everything from a Bible to pornography, right? That's postmodernity. Cable television, Dr. Yasser, if you want to understand postmodernity, cable television. Everything from ESPN to the most nefarious things you can imagine. And right next to that will be Christian broadcasting. You know, you're like, so if you're trying to lower your gaze, you get like whiplash trying to watch cable television. That's postmodernity. Postmodernity, although it's funny, I just dropped something on you, so pay attention. Postmodernity gives your soul whiplash because you're, you're always like this. Nothing stabilized. So you get hurt in your heart. So we decided that we're going to make dawah to this brother. So we went there. We knew him. He's from Bangladesh. He's a cool guy. We went in there dressed like sheikhs with turbans and thobes and everything. This is like 1994. Pac, I think, was still alive. We went in, and the brother saw me, and I was giving khutbah even then in the small community. They were trying to groom young brothers and sisters, right? We went in. It was like, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa And I got a 24 pack of beer, right? And some, I think, some Nat Turners or something. I forgot. No, some, uh, some Marlboros. And then we went up there. And then Mujahid, I can't say what he grabbed because that would indict him. And we put it all on the cash register. And the brother starts like going crazy. He's like, Imam Sahib, like, right? I was like, just ring it up, man. It's, it's light beer. I'm watching my carbs. I'm my boss down, I'm watching my carbs. So he got freaked out. And then Mujahid said to him, hey, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. He said, are you surprised to see us buying it? He said, yeah. He said, well, this is how we feel when, you, when we see you selling it. And he made toba. He came back to Allah. That's fatana. That's understanding someone. So the second quality is to be intelligent. That means also to understand how to run an institution. You should not accept the leadership of a community if you do not know how anything about nonprofit work, social enterprise, B corporations, structuring 
an institution around a vision that's strategic. Be very serious about going into the work that you do. Just don't think, okay, I'm going to accept the position and I do not know what I'm doing. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu when he held up this flag and he said, who will take this flag? Everybody wanted to take it. But then he said, who will give this flag its right? And everybody took their hands down except Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. So leadership into institutions means also I should have some familiarity with how to run an institution. Not just I'm going to be the president or whatever. No. So knowledge of religion, knowledge of the people, and the knowledge of the task at hand equals fatana. And there's an important point. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was not able to complete something, Allah always provided him with someone who would help him complete it perfectly. Sallallahu alayhi wa And that takes us into volunteer work. 